So Proxmox has a pretty great installer. And for most people, you should just be using the Proxmox installer to install Proxmox. But every now and then, you encounter a situation where the Proxmox installer does something you don't really want it to do. So today, we're gonna to install Proxmox 7 on top of Debian Bullseye. And we're doing that because this little guy here has eMMC storage that Proxmox's installer doesn't agree with. So the most common reason to install Proxmox on top of Debian is because you want to use a custom partition layout for the boot partition. And that's my reasoning in this case too. Whatever your reasoning is, you can walk through it with me. Proxmox has a guide on their website for how to do this with Proxmox 6 and Debian Buster. And there's a couple little minor changes for Proxmox 7 and Debian Bullseye. And I'll be sure to point them out. Yeah, like and subscribe. He's gonna rub his head on my thin client. So here we are in the Debian installer. We're going to click install and run through the install process. It's just like any other Debian install. You basically pick nothing except the SSH server. And then once the install is finished, we install Proxmox on top of it. So I'm going to call this node PBE 3040 because it's my Dell 3040 and I'm going to use it in a video coming up. Root password. So with Debian, you can either choose to install with a root password and it will not install sudo or you can install with an initial user account and not set a root password, and then the initial account will have pseudo permissions. Proxmox really likes to have a root user password, so we're gonna set a root password here. But we still have to create a new user anyway, and because they don't have pseudo permissions, they can't really do anything. So they're kind of useless, but they have to be here anyway because the installer wants to create them. So now the whole reason we're installing Proxmox on top of Debian so we can set up the disks how we want them. In my case, I'm using something with such a small internal drive that it would be pointless to install LVM or ZFS on top of it. So I just want to use ext4 for the whole thing. In your case, you might want to do some other partition arrangement or whatever, and that's why you would use Proxmox on top of Debian. So here I've got half gig ES, uh, ESP, which is the EFI system partition, 14 gigs ext4, 1 gig of swap. If I would have done that with LVM, I would not have had much space at all. And there's, there's no point in putting VMs on a 14 gig disk anyway. And we continue, right changes to disk. Debian is asking us if we want to install a desktop. And this is a server, so no we don't. No Debian desktop, no GNOME. So Debian says it's done, and time to reboot. So let's go. So this particular box I'm on has a bug in the UEFI where the grub loader needs to be at the removable media path here because the UEFI completely ignores every other configuration. So I launch the Debian installer into rescue mode. I'm telling it for scrub installation to removable path. And I say yes. And then we'll reboot into the new Debian system. So the system is booted up. We're going to log in as root. And I'm going to change the terminal font for you guys so it looks a little bit better. Okay, hopefully this looks decent for you guys. So before we install Proxmox, we need to configure the networking. And Proxmox is very particular that the interface must have a static IP address and the host name must be mapped to the IP address in the host's file. So first we're going to set the static IP address. So right now, after the Debian install, we defaulted to DHCP, so we need to set that to ENP1S0 static. We need to set the address. And the netmask. And the gateway. Now we need to edit the host file so Proxmox is happy. So by default, Debian has this line here for PBE340 at Palantir.net. And this line is correct, but the address needs to be what the static IP address is, which in my case is 172.27.1.154. And up here it also wants localhost.local domain. And the IPv6 stuff is all correct. So it's important that you have the host name of your system and the host name of your system at your domain 
set to your static IP address in the host file. Proxmox will be very angry if that's not true. So just to verify. So we got our, our IP address back. So now we just need to do IF down followed by IF up so that it reloads the network configuration. And then check our IP address. And what do you know? There it is. 172.27.1.154/20. Perfect. So now we need to add the Proxmox app repository. So we're going to create a new file in the sources.list.d folder. So slash etsy slash apt slash sources.list.d. And the new file we're going to call pve install repo.list. And we need to add. So Proxmox's repository is http download.proxmox.com slash Debian slash PVE and bullseye and PVE no subscription. There we go. That file is created. Now we need to add the Proxmox GPG key. And if you read the Proxmox wiki, it tells you the file is called Proxmox VE release 6.x.gpg. And you might think you need to go to 7.x.gpg, but that is actually not true. The file is not named that at all. Get the GPG key with wget http download proxmox.com slash dot com slash debian and the file is called proxmox release a bullseye a gpg and we need to put that in a specific folder so that apt will find it so etsy apt trusted gpg d and then we'll put the file there So we downloaded the GPG key for this. Now we can apt update and it should find the new repository and it did. And then we're going to do an apt full upgrade just to make sure everything is up to date before we install Proxmox. So now that we've done the apt update, we should be able to install Proxmox entirely from packages. So apt install Proxmox VE. And they also want two other packages, postfix and openiSCSI. So installing the Proxmox VE package should install the Proxmox kernel and all of their other changes. That's a lot of packages there. All of those are getting installed. So now postfix is asking us for configuration and we're just gonna say local only. Yep, let's keep going. Proxmox has one last thing they want. They want us to remove OS Prober. That remove OS dash Prober. That should be pretty quick. It's done. So now we're going to reboot and it should come up into Proxmox. So it still says Debian GNU Linux. But if you look, it's actually loading the 5.13.19 PVE kernels. It's loading the Proxmox kernel like it should. Just the grub entry doesn't say Proxmox, it says Debian. So here we are, welcome to Proxmox virtual environment. Now we can hop over to the web browser and finish setting it up. So we get the usual warning because Proxmox defaults to a self-signed certificate. So we say continue. We log in as our root account that we set up during the Debian install. And there we go. So we have local storage on disk. We don't have local LVM or local ZFS because we didn't set those up, but we're good to go. So if you actually want to use this for virtual machines and containers, you should go over here and fix the networking. So we created networking that has ENP1S0 set up with an IP address. And normally in Proxmox, you would create a Linux bridge and then assign the IP address to the bridge instead of to the interface directly. And that way you can bridge your virtual machines and containers. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to remove this. 
and we have pending changes, so we can't apply anything now until we fix our entire configuration. So now we're going to create a Linux bridge. On the bridge, I added ENP1S0 as a port. Now we're going to apply configuration. Look down here and see what it's going to do. So it's going to remove auto ENP1S0 and static. And we're going to get a bridge named VMBR0 with the IP address that is the same IP address we're currently using. And the bridge port is ENP1S0. So we like that, we're going to apply that. Done. So just to make sure we're still able to connect to the server, it still has the correct IP address. So now we're ready to use this. So the whole reason I made this video was so I could get Proxmox installed on my Dell Wise 3040, a little thin client here, because I needed it for a future video. So stay tuned, because you're going to see this guy running Proxmox in just a little bit. Yeah.